spending time with my wife. Absolutely. Um, that's in, in, in actually uh, not urgent, but it's a very important right now, and it's a maintenance thing. And I can keep it in quadrant two if I continue to do the maintenance on it. Sure. Okay. If I don't do the maintenance on it, it's going to end up in quadrant one under urgent and very important. And that's a hard mess to clean up. And then you have a mess to clean up. Yes. So, you know, that's just a little example of how even at work, it, it, you know, you can apply that. If you know you have a problem area, instead of waiting until that cri it becomes a crisis, maybe you can work on it in quadrant two and, and do the maintenance on it and, you know, cut, the, cut it off at the pass before it becomes a crisis. So, so you would definitely say that it's a nice approach towards your personal time mm -hmm. management. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I've been really crappy with time management, um, and that falls into um, doing what needs to be done, whether it's liked or disliked. So I, you know, I'm I'm a human. I'm just like everybody else. Sure. I like to do what I like to do first. And then the stuff that I dislike, I keep putting off, putting sure. off, putting off, putting off. Um, but if it's in your time matrix, you're, uh, and, and it's in a spot where you need to do it, then it needs to be done. You have to stop putting it off. Um, and by doing that, uh, you know, you're keeping it in, in quadrant two instead of letting it balloon up and end up back in quadrant one where it becomes a crisis again. And for me personally, after reading, you know, all about habit three and the four quadrants, I've started, you know, I'm like everybody else, you put off what you don't like, you know, as long as you possibly can. Right. And now, I've actually started doing the opposite. The thing that I don't want to do, the thing that I want to do the least, is that usually now the first thing I tackle. Get that high get hurdle, it the way. get it out of the yeah. way, absolutely. Yeah. And then as that's long as discipline. Discipline, that is discipline. You know, that's where strength of purpose comes in. Absolutely. You know, it, it's, it's you have to be you have to have discipline. And you have to have the end game in mind. You have to realize what you know, if you don't have direction, you don't know what you want, you can't achieve it. So, you know, what what do you want from your family in twenty years? How do they want them to see you? Sure. You know, respect dad, love dad. You know, still give dads hugs. Sure. You know. Sure. Um, if that's what you want, a, you know how to get to that point. It's a goal to work for. You know, you know what needs to be done every day, day in and day out to get to that point. But if you don't think about the end game in anything in life, you know, you can get way off track and things become less important. Well, I think it's very hard to be organized if you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Right. If you're not focused, everything will be scattered, you know, certain things won't be prioritized correctly, your discipline is almost impossible at that point. And like you said, you know, you have to be self-aware of what you're doing, whether it means doing what you don't like first. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, I dealt with that quite a bit in the military. Um, that there were certain jobs that people didn't like to do. And I would purposely either volunteer or just go ahead and do them. Sure. Now, it wasn't because I was a wonderful soldier. It was because I knew if I did that particular job, there wasn't going to be another crappy one coming my way for Sure, while. sure. But it's an example of, you know, get it out of the way. Get it done. And, and when you're in a leadership role and, and, and your, your employees see you doing that type of thing, you know, they're going to do it too. Absolutely. I mean, being a restaurant manager, I most of my staff, I'd say 60% of my staff is 18 and younger. Mm -hmm. And especially nowadays, you have to lead by example. For that age group, you know, their the structure and the worth ethic hasn't really been built yet. No, I mean, no, it, absolutely. It's, it's pre at a pretty early stage. So leading by example is, you know, the way to go in that situation. Because they will look up to you, you know. Absolutely. Um, it used to be, you know, respect was just automatically there. Now, with the baby boomers, you know, that's how they well, look. Yeah, the old saying is you don't have to respect the person, but respect the title. Exactly. That's not really so much anymore. No. 
And I think leading by example, you know, showing the discipline and organization that you have. The passion. The passion, absolutely. The passion for what you're doing. It does carry on from employee to employee then. You know, I worked at Quad Graphics for six years. And I would see Harry Quadrachi down on the floor stacking magazines. Or if he seen <clears throat> there was some debris on the floor, he would pick up a broom and sweep it up. It's amazing. He didn't have to do that much before everybody else started doing the same thing. Because sure. he didn't feel as though it was below him. Sure. You had press masters that would pick up a broom and start sweeping, and you know they would never do that before. Sure. So just by him doing that little bit, it it, it just it ballooned, and everybody started doing it. Um, and that was a perfect example of leading by example. You know, he would stack pallets, whatever needed to be done. It didn't matter if the job needed to be done, he did it. You know, That's amazing. It, it truly is. It truly is. You don't find that everywhere, and for someone that obviously does not need to do any of that, for him to care that much about it, he cares more refreshing. about you know setting that example instead of you know it's much easier to set an example if you do it than it is to just tell somebody to do it. It's because he sees the bigger picture. The bigger picture. That's right. So in this time management matrix. Um, we're not, you know, quadrant run for the, the crisis, you know, you have deadlines, you have pressing problems, but we should spend as much time as possible in quadrant two in the, in the maintenance because quadrant two will protect you from quadrant one. Prevention. Prevention is where it's at. Um, and the only way, you know, you can really understand how to work your prevention is to have your priorities. Have a proper uh, approach towards your time management. There you go. So. And or life management. So anything else, Dan? I think uh, I think that pretty much does it. All right. Yourself? No, I think we covered just about everything. But I just I just want to say one more time that this this habit three was. I opened it. No, I, I think it was more life changing. Than, yeah. than I, I, I yet to realize because um, I think as time goes on I'm going to reap the benefits of this and um, it's going to change my life. Uh, um, well, you know, like I said to you earlier before, you know, I was pretty close to um, this time management, you know, the quadrants for myself personally. After reading Habit 3, you know, I've really honed in on it, and it's made it a lot more clear. I was close. Well, you know, it was close, and, and but not quite. To understand this that, helps. three, I, you know, I also read one and two, and realized, you know, they're very essential parts to uh, yeah, make up. You know, they make up with, with the foundation for three. You know, without the other two, um, three, you you can't manage three. So correct. Um, all right. Well, we want to thank you all for listening. Thank you very much for your time. Bore you too bad. We could probably sit here and talk for a couple yeah. more hours. All right. Thank, thank you. you.